All right. Hello and good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Phillips, and I am a systems trainer with Greater Southern MLS. All right. Today's webinar is on Searching 101. Um, so let's get going. Um, I'm going to turn my um, video off and uh, we'll get going. Here we go. Searching 101, lots of ways to search for different things in the uh, matrix system. So we're going to go some of the, through some of those things today and different ways to search and all the different things that can be utilized. We'll even do map searches and things like that. Um, we'll also talk about how to email and print properties and we'll talk about some uh, tips and tricks as well. All right, as of now, I'm sure all of you know how to log into the MLS dashboard here when going through the Clarity system. So uh, let's begin by reviewing some of the different types of searches you can do under our search tab. So I'm going to click on search right here. And now it gives us the availability to search by different types, property types, and there are different search types as well. So these titles uh, that are bold, these are property types. So residential, residential income, residential lease, land, manufactured park, etc. And then these little guys in this call in this row here, these are different search types. Okay, they are already populated for you. All you have to do is fill in the information. So we'll go through some of those property types real quick. So residential, residential property type. We've always had that property type. Residential income, this is what was previously called a multifamily category. This was multifamily. So this would be some of your condos, apartment complexes, those types of things uh, where you would get residential income. So that's what this property type is. Then you have a residential lease. In the past, we just had a category for lease. And once you clicked on lease, then you said if it was a residential lease or if it was a commercial lease, but now residential lease has its own category. Land would be vacant land. Manufactured and park, by definition, this would be a manufactured home um, on a single parcel of land. And there would be additional manufactured homes on this single parcel of land. Currently, we in the state of Louisiana are not allowed to sell manufactured homes in a park. Now, there are some parks, so we'll call them parks, where manufactured homes are, but each piece of land um, is owned by that property owner. So there, that manufactured home is on a single parcel of land and each one is on its own piece of land. But if it is just one land owner and there are multiple mobile homes or manufactured homes in that park and they're paying a lot rent to someone, then that is something that uh, you wouldn't, we wouldn't sell and we wouldn't use, okay? So then there is a commercial property type um, under the commercial property type, you see here you have some searches already broken out for you in a commercial sale or a commercial lease. So if you're working with a commercial client, are they interested in purchasing a piece of commercial property? Or are they looking at leasing that property? Then you have a cross property type. This is when you would you would use this whenever you want to search across all property types. You want to search across residential. You want to search across land. You want to search across commercial property because maybe you don't know how that property was listed in the MLS. So doing a cross property search um, is the easiest search to do. And that way, all everything comes up. Like if you're doing a cross property search and you wanted to search for an address or or you know, um, if you just had a um, street name and a street number, you could utilize that and everything would come up right here. Cross property is that property type. Then you can search by open houses. You can also uh, search by property history. You can also search by change type history. And this is one of the ways you would create your hot sheets by this type of search. And you can search by public records. So lots of different ways to search in the MLS. 
So let's go through some of these now. So residential detail, I'm gonna click on residential detail. Whenever you do a residential detail search, it is a very detailed search. So as I'm just gonna scroll down, I know you've all seen this, but you see there are multiple fields, lots of different criteria, lots of different ways that you can search. So it's very detailed, okay? So I'm going to go back to those search types, so residential detail. Then you have a residential quick. This is a quick search, okay? I'm gonna scroll down. You see there are a good bit of fields, lots of different criteria you can choose. Um, so it's a quick search. This would be the search that would most resemble uh, the, the quick search that we had in our old system. So it's just to do a very quick search with not as many fields, if you didn't wanna look at all of those fields. Next, you have a residential listing ID. If you knew an MLS number, you could simply type it in right here in this residential listing ID search. Of course, you could just use the speed bar here and type in that MLS number, but this is just another way to use that. That was the listing ID. Then residential address. This is an address search. You see if I scroll down, it is just address type fields, street number, street name, directions, unit number, post office code, et cetera. Okay, so this is an address search. Some people have asked me in the detail search, can you just move the, you know, the address and the street number and stuff like that to the top? It's like, you know what, if that's what you wanna do, go use that address search. That will probably be easier uh, for you to use if you're just gonna search by an address. Then you have a search type called today's new listings. So today's new listings, when I first saw this, I thought it was like new listings that were entered today, but that's not what it is. Today's new listing search is a very quick search. You see, I am looking at the search criteria right now. That's it. You're just going to search by a status, a price, and a parish city or an MLS area. Okay, so it's just very quick. It's a really quick search. And that was today's new listings. Then you have a CMA search. This is, you can utilize this search if you were wanting to do a CMA. Every CMA begins with a search. So you can utilize this search if you were going, if you're wanting to do a CMA. Um, and you can put in your property types that you're looking for and other criteria that you're looking for as well. You can utilize this search if you would like to. Then you have the ability to create your own. So you can enter in your own fields. You can create your own search type, put in your own categories and utilize the create your own. Okay, so those are the different search types that we have under each tab. So you see there's resident, so that you have these search types under residential, residential income, residential lease, land, and then manufactured in park. So those are already pre-populated, pre-done for you. All right, so I'm going to utilize this detail search. I'm going to click on a detail search and we'll go through some of the different searching options that we have available here. All right, so first I want to point out there are lots of different fields. So these fields here, these are, you would enter in a checkbox, okay? Then there are fields that you can scroll and click on them, or you can type in the box here, and we'll go through all of, all of these different ones. Anytime you see the question mark, if you click on that question mark, it will give you the help that you need. It'll define for you what the field, what you know, what you can utilize this field for, what you can type in this field, or how it defines this field, and then it'll give you examples of what you can type into those fields. So we'll talk about those as well. So lots of different types of fields that you can use. Also, you will see some fields you can click on. I'm looking for a condominium or I'm looking for a timeshare, okay? So in this case, I, if I was doing this search, that's what I'm looking for, a condominium or a timeshare by utilizing this or, okay? Or I can say not, right? So I clicked on not, and if I can say it uh, cannot be 
a community apartment. Okay, I'm just using this as an example. When you see these, you can use uh, the or or the not, right? A better example of that might be if you were looking in cities, you know, as you see all of the cities and all of the parishes are listed here, you could utilize those or or nots as well. Okay, so let's get going. We'll get looking through uh, some of these fields and we'll do some examples. So I'm just going to clear this because I clicked on a couple of things. So I, you, anytime you click on some things and you're like, oh, let me just start over, you can utilize this clear button here at the bottom. Uh, also down here at the bottom, it gives you the number of matches as you type in your criteria. We'll look at those. Then you have the ability to look at your map. Uh, whenever you type in those results, or you can look at those results in a column, or, or they'll be just be listed. All right, so when we first went into, let's just do it again. So search, we'll go into residential detail. You'll notice that active and active under contract are checked as a default for you. So they're automatically checked. So if you begin the search, you're going to be searching all active properties, all active under contract. If you didn't want to look at active under contract, you could just simply click on that and um, then that criteria goes away. So active properties, they are actively on the market. Active under contract means that property is active with contingency. So there is a contract on that property, but there are some contingencies that that buyer has to meet before the property can actually go completely under a contract. So active under contract is the same as active with contingencies. Pending means a property is under contract. There's no contingencies, it's pending, it's under contract. Closed means the property is sold. Expired means that the contract has expired. The listing contract has expired. That is what expired is. I'm going to skip canceled and I'm going to skip hold and I'm going to go to withdrawn. So let's talk about withdrawn. You would use withdrawn if you had a property that was under contract and the seller called you and said, you know what? Hey, Michelle, I want to withdraw the property from the market. I'm hoping that it goes back on the market in like two months, but we just need to withdraw it for right now. Okay. So notice they haven't canceled the contract with me. They've only withdrawn the property from the market. So here would be an example of that. You listed a property on January 1st with an expiration date of July 1st. So you listed a property January 1st with a expire date of July 1st. That client called you and said they want to withdraw it from the market. I just want to take it off the market for a month, maybe two. Hopefully we'll get it back on, but we just need to withdraw it for right now. So we would just withdraw that property, but we still have an active contract. If we withdrew that property today on 416, we still have an active contract until July 1st. With that being said, no other agent can come in and list this property because I still have an active listing agreement with this, with this contact, with this person, with the seller. Okay. So that's when I withdraw a property. In the past, we didn't have canceled. So we just withdrew everything. It didn't matter if it, if it wasn't being sold or if the client fired us. We just withdrew it, but that is not how it works in our new database. We withdraw a property when we still have an active contract on that property. It's not canceled. So let's talk about what canceled means. Canceled means we have canceled the listing agreement. So same example, I listed a property on January 1st with an expiration date of July 1st. That seller called me today and said, Michelle, I need to um, cancel our agreement. I need to take the property off the market. Now's not the time. Something came up and we have to cancel it. Maybe next year we'll put it back on the market 
or maybe um, at the end of this year, we'll put it back on the market, but we need to cancel, you know, we need to cancel our agreement. And if that happens, then you need to cancel the property in the database. And I will say the only persons that can cancel a property is your broker or um, someone with, if you have a processor, if, if you have someone that enters these listings in the database for you, then they can cancel a listing. But for those of you who work for agencies where you enter your own listings, you can't cancel a listing. OK, you can't cancel one. Only your broker, your office manager, or your processor can actually cancel a, um, a property. OK, so another example would be for canceled is if, you know, your your seller just says, you know, it's been on the market for four months. No one's shown it. Um, we really think we would want to go to a different direction and maybe we want to use a different agent. And if that happens, then you need to cancel that property okay so withdrawn we still have an active agreement canceled that agreement has been canceled hold we would use hold um, anytime we want to stop marketing the property for up to a period of 30 days so let's talk about an example of when we would use hold we have uh, you have a list you have a listing on the market um, and the seller wants to do some construction on it. They want to do some construction. And during that construction time, they, they don't want it to be market marketed. They don't want it to be shown. And at that point, we can hold the property for up to 30 days. Okay, so you can hold the property. So another example would, of this would be, let's say a property was on the market and everybody in the family got COVID. And they don't want the property shown and we're not going to market it. We're going to stop the days on market. We just need to hold it and we can hold it for up to 30 days. Um, so that's when we would use hold. OK, so we that's a new option. We have the option to hold. So canceled and hold um, have been added for us. All right. So another thing I'm going to I'm going to show you here is that there is a little calendar here. And let's just say I click on right here, expired. When I click on this, you see by default, zero to 180, these are zero to 180 days pop up here. So if I did a search right now and I wanted to look for expired properties that have expired from to, between today and 180 days for like the last six months, we'll say, if I did this search, I will pull up all properties that have expired within the last six months. OK, now I can also change this to say, show me all the properties that have been expired in the last 360 days or the last 365 days. Or I might want to see expired properties within the last two months. So this is a date range. OK, and you can type a date range into any of these fields. You can also utilize this little calendar and you can find that date range also by utilizing the calendar. OK, these when you these don't default uh, any date uh, pending. It's whenever you get to closed and down that the uh, six month date populates. OK, so that's what that means. So you have your property subtypes here. Are you looking for um, a boat slip, a camp, commercial, residential, single family residence? This is. It would be something really common that you would use uh, in this field. You don't have to put a property subtype here. You don't have to use a property subtype at all. The only time I ever really use this is if I'm looking for something very specific. But just in an everyday general search, I usually don't even use a property subtype. So you don't have to use a property subtype. But if my client specifically wanted to live in a townhouse, then that's when I would utilize this type of uh, search, okay? Or if they were really looking for a manufactured home on some land, then that's what I would utilize this subtype, but you don't have to. Notice right now, uh, this is a good uh, time to show, I have active, active under contract selected, and I have townhouse selected. And I want you to look right here at the number of matches. So right now I have 13 townhouses 
that are active and active under contract in our entire database. Because I've not selected an area. Right now I'm searching our entire database, which includes our association plus associations that have been added on and are using the market. And there are a couple of um, agents using our database right now before it rolls out to their entire association. So we have their listings in here as well. Okay. So there's 13 active, active under contract townhouses. Then you have some common interest. This is kind of the same thing, but if I click on the help, it's used to describe the type of ownership that the property is that's for sale, okay? So if you ever are wondering like, oh, what does that really mean? You can just click on the, con the help and it will explain that to you. So property subtype also describes what's being property, what's being offered for sale. And it's the type of property that the buyer will own when they close their escrow, okay? So that's what those definitions are. Property attached, this would be, does the property have a common wall with another property? 433A, uh, the certification is used for manufactured homes um, on a permanent foundation and may ex uh, affect some lending options. So just click on these little help buttons to describe those. Special listing conditions, if you were only wanting to look for properties um, that were bankruptcy, that were in foreclosure, that have been given a notice of default, you can utilize a search to search those special listing conditions. Then you have some probate authority, court confirmation confirm, uh, required or not required. This little guy didn't have a help box. And as you see here, when I clicked on this, all of these definitions uh, come up also. Then you have the option to search for public remarks. We're going to search for these in a minute because these are fields that we can type into and we can use wild cards to search. So we're going to search for those guys in a little bit. We're going to do a special search for that. Then right here in the center, all of the center information, this has to do with where the property is located. So this is kind of like what type of property are you looking for? What status are you looking for? This is where are you looking? And this is what details are you looking for? Okay, so everything in the center here is where are you looking? It's geographic location. So you can do a map search where we search the map. You can search by zip code. You can search by parish. You can search by city. You can search by area or you can type in a subdivision name. So let me say this. If you're going to search by zip code, only search by zip code. If you're going to search by parish, only search by parish. By city, only search by city. By area, only by area. Only choose one of these. Let me tell you why. Because if I go in here and I type in Lake Charles right here, but I put in 70611 right here, maybe even 70605 right here. The system kind of gets confused, right? It's like, whoa, okay? And one's gonna override the other, okay? Or even if I put in right here, if I typed in Lake Charles, but then I threw in uh, 70611 is, and then you can have Grand Lake, which is 70607. So it just gets confused. So if you're gonna type, if you're gonna search by a zip code, only search by a zip code. You only want to search by cities, then just type in the cities, type in Lake Charles, type in Sulphur, Vinton, etc. Okay, just search by one of these. If you're going to do a map search, and I'll show you how to do a map search. If you do a map search, then use just use that map. You know what? Let's do that now. Let's search by some of these um, things now. I think you guys know if I was typing in zip codes at this point, I would just type in 70605 comma 70601 comma 70607. Okay. What did I do wrong? Because, oh, I got townhouse clicked here. Okay. Let me just clear this. Okay. Because see, I had townhouses still clicked. So when you're getting some weird results, just clear, just clear it. Okay. So now we're cleared. Now we're looking for active, active under contracts, and we're, let's type in those zip codes. 70663. Let, let me change it up so there's not quite as many. 
So see, I typed in 70663 and I have 49 matches. Okay. And my client would like to live in 70611. Okay. So now I have 84 matches. So if you're going to add in multiples, just add a comma when you type that in. So another example here would be if we were searching by parishes, if we wanted to look in Calcasieu Parish, see, I clicked on Calcasieu Parish, but let's say I want to add in, I need to take these guys away. Let's say I want to add in Jeff Davis Parish. Now I can hold down my control key and click on Jeff Davis. And now Jeff Davis has been added. If I want to add in, obviously some of these parishes are not in there, but let's just say I want to add in Vernon. I'm going to hold the control key down and click on Vernon. So that's another way that you can add them in. I could just type them or I can scroll and add multiples by holding down the control key. Another thing I can do is use this little box here. Do you see this little box? When you click on this box, you can just add them and remove them like this. Let's say I want to remove Vernon. I want to remove Jeff Davis. I'm going to keep Calcasieu and I'm going to add Cameron. So I just click on Cameron and hit add. And now Cameron has been added. So see here, here's my updated info here. So if I wanted to look for Vernon, instead of scrolling, I could just type in Vernon and you see Vernon pops up here and then I can add it as well. Okay. So that's another way that these are all ways that you can use these types of searches. Cities, same thing. I can just simply start typing them here. Let me get rid of these. So you can see how it gets confusing. So that's why I say you only use one. So like Charles, comma, sulfur, uh, comma. So I can continue to just type them in and add them, or I can go to my little box, find them or type them in here, Cameron, add them over. So that's one way uh, to do it. Or I can hold down my control key. Whoa, hold down my control key. Let me put the screen bigger again for you and add them as well, all right? So those are all the ways to do that. MLS areas, they're listed here. I'm gonna tell you these will probably go away. So if you are a big area searcher, you might wanna get in the habit to search a different way because these areas may be going away at some point. Okay, just a little tidbit. If you wanna type in a subdivision, you can type in that subdivision name here. Remember, it's only as good as what the listing agent put in. If the listing agent did not put in that subdivision name, because it's not required, then you may miss out on some listings, okay? And same is true for everything else. All right, so I'm gonna clear this out and let's go over here to um, the details and what we're looking for. What price range is our client looking for? Remember when we first launched, we had to add in our zeros. Do you see my examples with the zeros, how they pop up? Because remember we had to add those because this little handy dandy thousands checkbox had gone away when we first, first came back around. If you wanna type in all those zeros, uncheck that box. The box is default, it's checked for you by default. And when you do that, all you have to do is type in the number in the hundreds place. You don't have to put any of the thousands. You don't have to put any of the zeros. So you can just type in, this would be, I'm looking for properties between 225 to $325,000, okay? So you just type in those numbers. Now, if I just put in my client wants to look for a house for $200,000 and I just type in 200, the system is only going to show me properties that are $200,000. That's all it's going to show me. If I put in this number, it's going to show me only houses that are 200,000. But if my client wanted 200,000 or less, I have to put in that minus symbol. Now I have 193 matches that are $200,000 or less, right? My client wanted 200,000 or more then I would put in that plus sign and I have 309 homes, properties that are $200,000 or more. If I wanted to put in a range here, I start with the smaller number, add in the larger number, and now my results are showing me 163 matches 
that are 200 to 275,000. So that is how you utilize your price function. So I'll show you some of the, the ones that I use uh, the most that you might find most useful. If your client was looking for new construction, is it new construction, yes or no? Again, it's only good as what the listing agent put in. Some of these features are new features or new details. So just think about that because and if it's not a required field and if it's a newer detail, you might miss out on some of those uh, listings that were listed prior to uh, the system update. All right. You can search by your parcel number, status, price status date. This will show you if there was an update. You can search for that date range if you wanted to put between zero and 15 days here. So now my matches are showing me homes that are 200, and 200 to 275,000 that have had some kind of price or status update within the last 15 days. So maybe the price went up within the last 15 days, the price went down the last 15 days, the property came back on the market the last 15 days. So I can really look at the properties that have had some kind of change and I can put in any date range there. All right, bedrooms. If my client wants three bedrooms and three bedrooms only, if I put in a three, I see all properties that are 200 to 225,000 with only three bedrooms. If my client was like, I at least need three bedrooms, I'm going to put three plus because that means they're okay if there's four bedrooms they're okay if there's five bedrooms but they at least need three bedrooms so i'm gonna put a plus right here all right so when i put three plus i have 155 matches again if i only put in three i have 86 matches and it's only three bedrooms that's it all the four bedrooms won't show up etc all right if they want three or four bedrooms. You can put in that range as well. If for some reason they're like, nope, I only want three or four, that's it. Then you could do that range there as well. All right, same is true for bathrooms. If your client wanted two bathrooms and two bathrooms only. So right now I have homes that are 200, 275,000 with only three bedrooms and only two bathrooms. I have 75 matches. My client was like, all right, I'll have, I keep hitting the wrong thing, two bathrooms or more, then now I have 86 matches, okay? So this is baths total. When we talk about baths total, if we click on our little help here, this is the total number of bathrooms. So here's an example. Two full baths and one half baths would end up being three bathrooms, okay? If I put in two or more, this is gonna show me maybe it's, two full and a half, like in this example, maybe it's two full, or maybe it's three full, or maybe it's four full, right? Because it's the total number of rooms that are going to show up here in baths total. If you want to specifically look for full baths, you can specifically look for full baths. So here would be a way if they need at least full two full baths. So right now I'm showing three at only three bedrooms, two or more bathrooms total, but two full baths. They need two full baths. And a full bath contains four fixtures. It contains a tub, a shower, a sink, and a toilet. That shower can be a freestanding shower or that shower could be a shower head in a tub. So a full bath has four, what did I say first? Four things, okay? It has four things. So I can utilize this feature as well if they're like, I have to have two full bathrooms. So you can utilize these searches as well. If they only, if they at least want one half bath, you can put in a half bath. So not right now we're looking for three bed, only three bedrooms, two or more bathrooms total. And one of those has to be a half bath. Okay. So you can look, um, you can utilize these as well. Know as you use these features, the numbers diminish. So you really fine tune your search. So stay tuned to that. I mean, so just be cautious because you can search your way to nothing. You can search your way out of, out of everything into a complete zero. All right, same as one fourth bath. A one fourth bath contains one feature. It only contains just a sink or just a toilet. 
Does your client want to live in a senior community? Yes or no. Does your client require a certain living area? I know I've heard that a lot. They're like, you know what? It has to be at least 2,500 square feet. Okay, so I need 2,500 square feet or more. And remember in this example, I'm looking for only three bedrooms, two or more bathrooms. And if I want 2,500 square foot or more, I have three matches. Mind you, I have no city checked. This is just searching the entire database. Okay, you can also put in a range here. If they want it between 2,100 and 2,500, you can put in that range and we see we have 10 matches. All right. You can put in the lot size if they want to live on three acres. Okay, look at this. We have one match. Three bed, only three bedrooms. This really surprises me. Only three bedrooms, two or more bathrooms on three acres of land. By golly, we have a house in our database. We didn't specify what city. And if your client was like, I don't care what city it's in. I just need to live on three acres. I need three bedrooms and two more bathrooms. Then here you go. Okay. So you saw right here, I just changed it to acreage. It defaults to square foot. But if I change the lot size to acreage, I can type in uh, the number of acres right here. Maybe they at least want an acre of land, which is very common. You have two matches. Garage spaces, if they need a certain number of garage space, you can type that in. Is the garage attached to the house? Year built. Maybe your client wants to live in a house that was built in 2010 and early and um, earlier. Okay, so it's got to be a newer house. It can only be 11 years old. You type in that year built right here. 2010 plus, I have 43 matches that meet that criteria. So you can put in that year built or you can put in that range. Listing terms, if they only qualify or they only want to use a, a VA loan, then you can type in a VA loan. You see here with this criteria, I have 19 matches that have specified that the seller is okay with a VA loan if they specifically know. Again, remember these listing terms, they actually are required. But if the listing agent is not sure what to put right here, because you know what, they'll take anything. You know, and maybe they didn't go through and check all of that. So just be cautious of this. But if you know specifically what they're looking for, I would recommend I would do a search with VA, just VA loans, like I see here, and I see 19 matches. And then I would also do that search with the VA loan um, unchecked because uh, just, just to make sure that you've searched uh, all of those options. Okay, location, here's that street information. If you knew exactly uh, the street name and the street number uh, that you were looking for. And now you have all of your features. And if y'all haven't gone through and looked at these features, there are so many features. So you have all your cooling features, your fireplace, your heating. Also, when you're searching these features, really think about what's required because when it's required, then you know that the agent put something in that spot. But if it's an area that's not required, then, you know, maybe they didn't put it in. Maybe they just skipped over it. But this is all here to really define the features of the home. If you are a selling agent and you have a listing, you need to do your due diligence and define that house in the MLS. Put everything that's in there. It might be a little tedious at first because you're not really, you don't really know exactly all the features that you can put in. But once we get used to it and we're looking around and we know what we can put in and really define it, define it. Is it the kitchen in the eating area in the kitchen? Is it in the living room? Is it, uh, what else can we put here? Is it separated? Like, is it a totally separate area? Is there a dining room? But is there also a breakfast nook? So really define that and ask your clients, you know, what it is they're, they're looking for. So you have all these interior features. If you were a listing agent and there was granite countertops, you would want to put that in. There was an intercom system. These are all things that you can search by, okay? Is there a pantry, pull down attic to stairs. Wow, so there's so many features, all right? So go in and look at all of these features. This is also a good one. Where's the laundry room? There's still a laundry room, a lot of homes with laundry rooms that are outside or on the porch. So outside, is it inside? Does it have its own room? Is that room in the kitchen? Is it in the garage? Because we see that too. So you can really define these. 
Does your client look for, do they want a bidet in the home that's been their, their dream home? Does it contain a bidet? Granite countertops, heated floors. Maybe they wanted heated floors. So these are all the features you can define. Again, so right now, what do I have checked? I have uh, three bedrooms, two or more bathrooms. I checked pull downstairs to the attic and they needed a bidet. And you see, I've, I got nothing. I, I went, searched myself out of the features. Because remember, these, all of these features only became available in our new system, okay? So once all of the older, um, all the old inventory is out of the database, then some of these features might be there, okay? But again, I would do a search for everything, like just show me everything available that meets like number of bedrooms, bathrooms, or the things that they can't live without. And then I would get very uh, defined those things that they really would like to have. So kitchen features, et cetera, you could search by room types. Do they really want a dance studio in their home, et cetera? Maybe they really want the master bedroom on the first floor. Okay, so master, we'll do master bedroom and we want it. Oh, well that, okay, right here, level. Maybe they really want it on that first floor. Um, that's something that they can't change. I mean, they could change it though as carpet uh, in that room, but they really want it on the first floor, which is, you know, fairly common, then you can search by that as well. Then you have some exterior features, some of the things they might be looking for. If they're looking for a certain view or they would like to live on a golf course, you can search by the lot, their awning features, maybe uh, their exterior features. Maybe they want um, an outside patio. You can search for sewer, lakefront, etc. Okay. You can also search by listing and buying agent uh, and office. So if you want to look for uh, a property that was listed by a certain agent, you can start typing in that person's name and it would, all of those agents uh, will populate. Okay. If you were looking for a specific home, let's say, you know, it's a specific home. Somebody said, you know, it's for sale by some so-and-so. Then you can go in and look at that. You can also start looking for an office, uh, you can push, you can type on this little, um, this little, I don't know what you would call this. I need to figure out what they call these little things, these little files maybe. And you can start typing in that office name as well. You also can search by buying agents too. Now let's talk about additional fields. So if you've never added any additional fields, then you won't see any additional fields in this area. I have added additional fields because I like to search by schools, okay? And our old system schools was defaulted at the top and this system, it isn't. So if I wanna search by a, a school, then I can go down here to additional fields, click on this add remove. And now I can add any of these fields. Do you see all of these fields I can add and search by? I can add any of them over here into selected fields. So let's say I want to search by, let's see, zones there. We'll say well depth, depth. Okay, I'm just completely being silly and clicking on something. Let's say I wanted to search by well depth because that was important to my client. I can click on that and click add, and then it will go down here to the selected fields. So I'm gonna hit back, which is kind of like save. And I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and you see I've added well depth, all right? So some of the things that I've added were property condition because sometimes that's important. They wanna turnkey, you know, they are they maybe are looking for a fixer upper, right? So I wanna search by that. So I've added property condition down here. If the property's in the city limits or not, I've added that and I've added the schools. So these will always live here in the bottom of the additional fields. And remember, I'm in the residential detail search. So this is where these added fields will be. They'll only be in the detail search because that's where I'm adding them. And they will always be down here at the bottom. If I want to remove one of these fields, then I can go here, hit add, remove, click on well depth and remove it. And now it is gone. Okay. So that's how you're going to add some fields there. And so now those are down there at the bottom. 
Okay. Also, you notice as you add things, they populate here in the speed bar. So right now we're looking, we're doing a residential search for active and active under contract properties that are between 200 and 225,000. They have three bedrooms and two or more bathrooms. So that is what um, we're looking for. We actually did add some additional things down here. I'm just gonna clear those guys out and let's do a map search now. So I'm gonna change criteria and I'm gonna add, not all of them, <laughs> active and active under contract, all right? So now we have 506 matches in our entire database that are active and active under contract. So now we're gonna do a map search. All right, so those properties will populate on this map. I am in the satellite view because that was the last view I was looking at. But let me go back to the map view. You see, I'm right here at satellite. I can change it to satellite. And let me show you why I love satellite. Because when I'm really looking for something, I really hone in to that property, okay, in the satellite mode. So if I'm looking for it, I want to know exactly exactly where that is. So I really zoom in. And my last search I was doing, I was actually looking for a piece of land here in Sulphur for a commercial business. And so I was really zooming in to see what was around that area. All right. So that's why I had it on satellite mode and you can toggle these. So I'm going to go map, back to the map view. And this is the map view that you are used to seeing. All right. So on this map view, I am showing there are 502 properties that met the criteria that I put in here because I just said, show me everything and show me the map. I have 155 little properties that are detailed. The green is they are active. This little blue is they are active under contract, All right? So let's do a map search. I use map searches when I actually am looking for comps. Uh, because I like to define the area that I'm looking in. It's just easier that way. So this is exactly how I would begin my comp search. I would go to a detail search. I would have act, well, I would do active, active under contract, pending and closed, so sold. So I would choose those four and I would go straight to this map search because this is, I, I love to search by this map. So let's say you have a client. They tell you, I want to live in the university area. So you, as the good agent, you want to pull up everything in the university area. Now, if you do a big search, you can't really tell the system where the university area is because it doesn't know. You have to show it. So that's why you're going to use this map view. Now I'm in the map view and I'm going to search. So I'm going to use my little tools here. This is a radius, a rectangle, a polygon. I can also draw freehand. So I'm gonna use my little rectangle here and I'm gonna define the university area. And let's say I feel that this is the university area. So I click on that and now it's only showing me those properties that are in the university area. Click on results and voila. Here is the properties that are in the university area. Okay, so they're all here. So that is how you use the map search, okay? I can also toggle back to the map to look at them. As you know, you can click on any of these properties and um, it will pull up the, a picture of the property and give you some specifics of the property. So just click on any of them and it'll pull up that a photo and the pictures of that property. So that's how you, you would use your map search. If you needed to clear out the shape, you can just go right here to this little eraser and clear that shape. <clears throat> Another thing I'll show you while I'm in this map is if you zoom in really close, you see I'm zoomed in really close and you see I see the parcels. Do you see how I can see the defined definitions of each lot? So I can see each parcel. I can click when I'm in this mode, when I'm this close, I can click on any piece of land, any parcel, and it'll show me exactly who owns this piece, this property. I can click on tax right here and it'll take me straight to Realist Tax and all her tax information. You can zoom in once you're in that mode, uh, you can really see um, all of those, um, who owns that and all those parcels. 
So when you do your search, here's your search results. Your columns might look a little different than mine. You can customize any of these columns. If that's something you want to learn how to do, um, we can definitely reach out to me. We can talk about it. I can show you or you can take another class. So you have your listing ID. Your S is your status. So these are active status. The U means active under contract. You have your subtype. These new guys, this is a single family residence detached, means it's not attached to something else. You have your street number, name, you have your city, you have your area. SLC is special listing conditions, SLC special listing conditions. Most of them will be standard, just means it's a regular there's no special listing condition. It's just standard. You might see some here that might be um, foreclosure or it might be, you know, there might be some other guys here. It might be HUD owned and, you know, the, you'll see some special listing conditions if, whoop, if there are any right here in SLC. You have the list. LC um, is your list enclosed price. So your list price is showing. If there's been a reduction, so this price right here, there's been a reduction. This is the current list price. So it was list for something higher. This guy started out as something lower and they've increased the price. And then when you're looking at closed properties, this price that you see in this column will reflect the closed price. You have your price per square, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, your square foot living, the year built. You have your lot square footage or your acreage. So this end part here is your acreage. You have your days on market and your cumulative days on market. So this guy right here, do you see? So most of them are days on market. They're right on. They're the same. But if you see a home where you have your days on market is 272 and your cumulative days on market of 816, that means that this property was in the system was taken off the market and then added back in. So I'm gonna click on this. If I click on this property and I go right here to history, I will see all of the changes of this property. So I always see it was on the market, it was canceled, it was back on the market, it expired, it went back on the market, it was canceled, it went back on the market. So do you see all of this? <clears throat> So when you see that cumulative days on market, it means there's been activity prior to the most recent time it was on the market. And because of that, all of this time accumulates and you see all of the history because it's not, there's just been way too much activity. Okay. Like it's just been on the market. It was never sold. Do you see here? I don't see any sold. It's just been listed and expired and back on market. And now had this property been sold, and had been off of the market for three or four months, then the days on market, the cumulative would have gone away. It wouldn't have, it would have stopped ticking, but because it was never sold, it's just going to show you that cumulative. So one thing I'll show you here, um, when you click on a property, this is the 360 property view. It's my favorite view. I'm so glad it's the default. Whenever you're looking at this view, I want you to work your tabs. Okay. Always look right about here in the system because this is where you're gonna work these tabs. There's lots of tabs you can work. Remember, here's your criteria, here's your map, here's your results. And then you have these tabs here that you work. So listing information, this is all your listing information. It tells you everything about the property. Now click on tax. When you click on tax, it tells you who owns this property. Um, it gives, it could give you an estimated value if there was one, it gives you all the tax information, the assessment information. So it gives you all the tax property. This and MLS is connected to Realist, so they feed back and forth. So this tax information is what you would find in Realist Tax. You can look at all the photos of the home by clicking on Photos, History. We looked at that history. If you scroll down, wow, it's really been listed a lot. You can also click on your parcel map. When you click on your parcel map, you see your property uh, dimensions. Do you see here? You see your property dimensions. You see where the property is located. You have a satellite view and you have a map view. And then when you look at your flood map, this will tell you if this property is in a flood zone. Oh, this one doesn't have any info. But usually there's a, a map here. Let me go back. Let's just go back to my one line results and let's pull another one just so I can show you. So flood map and you see 
it shows you right here is where this property is located. And it shows me that this property, it's a different property, is located in flood zone AE. Another little tip to look at right here is, is this property in a flood zone? It is in. If it was not in a flood zone, it would show out right here. Okay, so really work these tabs. All right, I hope y'all have a fantastic weekend. Um, again, reach out to me if you need anything, because there are more things I feel I could have showed you. I may have got a little long winded. Reach out, let me know. But if not, have a great weekend. Stay dry and I will see you all soon. Y'all take care. Bye, y'all.